Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be holy. God's fire. The law of faith. Let's touch one more. That causes doors to be open. Ah, goodness. The law of favor. The law <laughs> of favor. Jesus is Lord. Someone's life is about to change. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Listen now. The law of favor. Exodus 30, Exodus 3 and verse 21. Let's just discuss it quickly. Please promise your pastor you will use these things you are learning. And promise him that you will return with the result to say, sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This thing will give predictability to your life. You will play life like a chess. You know how people play chess? God is connecting the dots to our lives. And I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when he goes, he shall not go empty. Listen, the giver of favor is God, but he uses system. Sit down. Psalm 89 verse 17. Three scriptures. Psalm 89 verse 17. Please help us media. Read it if you are a Christian. For thou art the glory of their strength. And in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. See. A horn is a symbol of authority. That when you see a man rise. Regardless of background. It is not just because some people are lucky. Please hear this. There is a deep mystery that is responsible for the fearful rising of men. It vetoes backgrounds. It vetoes limitations. Just remain at verse 17. Just stay there. And in thy horn, thy favor shall my horn, my authority, my influence be exalted. One last scripture. Psalms 102 and verse 13. Thou shall arise. When God arises, this is serious business. There are not many instances in the Bible where God has had to arise. But on this matter, O oh God, arise. And have mercy upon Joshua Selman for the time. So favor has timing. The time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Please sit down. Arise. Favor is the number one reason people succeed in life. But respectfully speaking, and I'm saying this because I'm only using this platform, I know God is speaking to the body of Christ. Believers, hear me. The reason why many believers do not experience favor is in their definition of favor. The way we define favor is why we don't experience it. The average person defines favor as unmerited access. Is that true? That description is not should come to everybody after 24 hours. Sit down. Now listen. I always put a disclaimer as I teach. Don't go and harass any pastor, harass any book, harass any church to say, ah, I just brought a new revelation. You have been teaching nonsense. Don't do that. 
the spirit of the Christ is the spirit of love and I know your pastor has mentored you to be people who understand the character of the spirit the goal is not to go tearing down people and write all kinds of insulting posts heard me say it for many of you who listen to me who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters it doesn't matter how many people hate you that's not a problem hatred does not kill but who likes you a king likes a village girl and suddenly she becomes queen in this kingdom who likes you matters you can be in lagos and someone looks at you and says i like you i want to help you no strings attached are we together now the proof of favor is not money the proof of favor is loyalty to the heart of man the proof of favor is not money you can have money and not have favor wisdom also gives money diligence also gives money but the real proof of favor is loyalty to the heart of a generation when people look at you and love you and will go to any length to support what you represent the favor of god is upon it was because Jesus, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, and Jesus increased. Believers, hear me. Jesus increased, Luke 2, 52, in wisdom, in stature, and he saw the importance of favor. He had to increase in favor with God. You can have favor with God and not have favor with men. If you have favor with God, you will have encounters. You will see angels. Mary was highly favored and she saw angels. She had all kinds of things. But you will be broke, you will suffer, the doors will remain closed. The doors are not closed in heaven, they are closed on earth. So you need favor with both God and man. Go and lose the colt and bring him. And when the owner asks for it, tell him the master had need. If favor was not on Jesus, you will be surprised what that man would have done to Jesus. Nobody works hard and ties his colt. You come and lose it because you have a crusade. Who do you think you are? It is favor that is on you that will make someone stand up and say, Please, what can I do to increase you? He said, God is, he said, No, no, no. I, I, I owe you. Please believe what I am telling you. No strings attached. I'm interested in your ministry. I'm interested in your project. How can I help? Please, can I pay the school fees of your children till university? Give me that honor. And you are there wondering and saying, are you sure that there is not? He said, no. No. I will give these people favor in the sight. In the sight. Listen. Pastor, sir, I prayed for one month for the grace for favor to come upon my life because I studied ministry and I studied living and I found out if I don't have favor, things will be very bad and I did not want to compromise to get to a point where because of pressure, you will dabble into things that are ungodly because you are trying to feed your belly. I cried to the God of heaven. The day it came, I said, this is it. like a magnet everybody looks at you and you become their delight they look for ways to see that ministry is easy they look for ways to see that you are lifted hallelujah you need favor to achieve your goals let me show you quickly how to activate favor but are you getting blessed favor the first key to activate favor is honor please write it down honor the first key that activates favor is honor the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their uniqueness you are far from favor when you dishonor men you are far from favor when you dishonor God you are far from favor when you dishonor principles. 
honor. When a door that was open today closes tomorrow, dishonor closed it. Dishonor is the trivializing, the downplaying of the sacrifices. Listen carefully. Of the spiritual investment of man. When you, when the devil wants to shut the door of favor, he will give you an attitude of sarcasm, an attitude that downplays the sacrifice and the 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 uniqueness of man. Oh, Pastor Amos, he's a great man. What is there? Is he the only man of God? You see, that attitude, no matter how you pray, that attitude of dishonor has already closed the door. You will weary yourself in front of that door. I have watched with wonder and shock across the body of Christ. I have seen pastors, apostles, prophets, great people, anointed. But you can trace the doors that are closed towards them. There are, this is why our generation of young people don't move forward. Our extent of dishonor to parents, dishonor to people, every young man who just carries anointing is lousy, is sarcastic, sees an old woman and an old man and treats them like children. And we continue to break spiritual laws and spend our lifetime paying for it. Dishonor is terrible. It's worse than a bomb blast. Are we together? He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Honor. Honor is powerful. Some of you have parents that the grace upon their life is that nothing finishes. They may not be millionaires, but you've seen that grace. You will never ask mama for anything and she'll say, I don't have in spite of the fact that she's not educated there is always a grace you are working with an oil company but you still say mama can you help me with hundred thousand and she will open one basket and bring it out it's a grace it's not just savings you have not honored that grace that's why it did not come upon you and in spite of the fact that you are doing a white collar job blue collar job whatever kind of color you find out that you are not making progress The anointing of God is hidden in men, but it takes honor to allow it flow towards you. You see every rich man and you just said, look at them, thieves. This is our share of uh, national cake. No, I, you don't know the story of that person. That person came to Lagos, slept under a bridge, continued to walk the principles of the kingdom. Listen, the palace has a way of eroding scars, but make no mistakes, they are there every great man has scars and if they are honest enough they will not only tell you stories they will show you the scars let no man trouble me he says for i bear my body the mark i didn't jump the school of the spirit i went through it oh why is this businessman thriving like this maybe he was just lucky why is this man of god i'm sure they are just lucky and you shut the door favor is controlled by honor you will never hear me dishonor any man of god in the body of christ you will never hear me stand on anybody's pulpit and tear down the relevance of that church i will never not this church not any church no i will teach truths i will within the limitation of the apostolic office i will see that the body of christ comes to the coordinate of truth but i will administer it in love as I'm teaching you now, I teach with a deep sense of reverence and honor to you. Because I do not know what grace you are carrying as you are seated there. You may not even be aware, but the grace is still there. I can honor my way to receiving that grace while I am teaching. Show me a man that understands honor and I show you a man who does never shot for. No. There is a grace that comes with honor. It makes you likable. Beulah, Hefzibah. People look at you and want to be around you. 
they will run around themselves to see that they connect to yourself. Listen, if you are alone and you are struggling, it's proof that dishonor continues to close open doors in your life. When I found that law, I said, this is it. I don't dishonor men. I truly do not. You wanted to marry the lady, but the day you went to see her parents, you were acting as if they are stupid people and the father was just watching you. Dressed like an armed robber, looked like, looked like, looked like an irresponsible boy. They didn't say you should sit down. You sat down. You didn't even carry anything. You carried a bottle of wine holding it in your hand as if you are selling it. And you and the parents watch you. I'm showing you what dishonor does to our generation. They, they won't say you are stupid. They will respect you. When you are done, they'll say, it's all right, um, we have seen you. You will hear from us. Next thing you see, an invitation card of their daughter to a proper, honorable, responsible young man. Same thing with preachers. God grants you an opportunity to platforms that you know that you should not even be there. And you run down everybody and make it look as though it were your power. You run down every man of God. There is no discernment of cadres. And that door exits you never to open for you again. When a door opened yesterday and does not open tomorrow, there is an explanation. This honor closed it. There are people who are invited to many churches and ministries only once and they never invite them again. The message was powerful, but the persona did not carry on. Are we together? Number two, the second key that activates honor is called value. Value. I mean that activates favor. Value. What is value? A measure of your contribution. A measure of your usefulness. Your skill. A measure of your productivity. Life was designed to work based on a reward system. If you are valuable, I've always said it that most people say preachers are blessed for doing nothing. And I say no, 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 no. We are not blessed for doing nothing. There is an explanation as to the blessings of God. It's just the nature of how our value is dispensed that makes it look like it's nothing. Are we together now? Every man of God is blessed because he's a supplier of value. Just because the value is spiritual in context does not mean it is not. It's real value. You are shaping the understanding of people. You are connecting them to faith. You are opening their eyes to see you are constructing a destiny for them based on an information that is referenced on the word of God. That is value. Are we blessed? Listen to me. The Bible says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, it leaves you with an assurance that he will stand before kings. He will not stand before mean men. You must make up your mind that to attract favor, you are going to be exceptionally valuable. And value is twofold. First, your virtue or character. Then second, your transactable skill. Don't limit value to just skill. There are many people who are not well behaved but are skillful. Ask any wealthy man here. Ask anybody who is a leader, a company holder, a man of God here. Nobody wants a gifted rebel. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Are we together now? Your virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. Virtue is value. Virtue is not just something for women. You know, when they say a virtuous person, you just imagine a woman who wants to marry. No, 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 no. Virtue has nothing to do with women and marriage. It is the closeness. Virtues of respect. Virtues of discipline. Virtues of diligence. There are many, many indisciplined people who want to be successful. The discipline to be consistent in prayer. The discipline to study. Are we together now? The discipline to tell yourself, if I need to fast, I fast. Favor, that's why, that's why when people say favor is unmerited, those who have it just nod their head and say, no, you got it wrong. Virtue, that you can greet people. Do you know you can get a job just for being respectful? Good morning, sir. Say, who are you? This young man. Well, sir, I'm, 
I'm trusting God for a job. Really? No, you're a young man. Come. And that's it. Somebody's prayer point of two weeks was answered through the communication of virtue. Praise the name of the Lord. And then finally, we have to pray. We'll deal with that in the night. But there is a grace called the Esther anointing. Huh. The Esther anointing is a grace. Esther chapter 2. From verse 14 and 15. Alagbara, you, you are, are the mighty God. God. Yeah, you, you are the glorious God. You are the glorious God. life is about to change please don't miss the vigil esther chapter 2 the holy spirit opened my eyes to the fact that people don't just rise from shushan to the throne there is an anointing the bible says when vashti was banished are we bible students there was a vacancy listen ladies listen everybody i show you the key that takes people from shushan to the palace there is an anointing i call it the esther anointing they gathered young virgins from everywhere and mordecai decided to give his little girl a try esther is together with other happening city ladies and hey guy tells her let me share with you a secret i know the king i've worked with the king for many years i know the kind of woman that the king wants don't mind all these things you see other women doing. I will give you an ointment. Rub it on your body for one year. Keep rubbing that ointment every day. I give you one with aloes for six months. I give you another one. After one year, go before the king. You will be his queen. And then the Bible says, In the evening she went and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women. To the custody of that name and the king's chamberlain which kept the concubines she came in unto the king no more except the king delighted in her and that she were called by name you know he was explaining what would happen 15 and now when the turn when it was the turn of esther the daughter of abihel the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in unto the king she required nothing but what he guy the king's chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed he had shown her a formula when you read and just that oil was what she kept rubbing and then read the b part if you're a christian one to read and esther obtained favor here it is again in the sight of all men that looked upon her hold on do you know how many people look at you in a day? If all of them favor you, you will not ask for money again in your life. What kind of grace is it that comes upon a man that the moment you look at them, you are compelled to be interested in their lives? It's like a spell. This charm-like approach. Verse 17. Not even the king would resist his grace and the king loved esther above all the women before esther came there were others he was looking at but not when esther comes he already said okay note this note this this one looks close but here comes a young hebrew girl a village girl with nothing but an anointing she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than 
so it's true that before you came five people were already being considered for the job already their names were down but not when you show up place favor on your certificate and present it if all you present is a piece of paper you will not get anything add to your piece of paper favor add to your contract proposal favor if all you have is just design and quotations you will not get anything not in this wicked world than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti favor is a law that opens doors opens gates opens cities apostle is because i've never had the opportunity to be in the government house i'm so skilled unfortunately there are times that you can interpret dreams but you will need somebody who is already in the palace to send you an invitation it is favor that connects you when i found this key pastor i cried for one whole month praying lord the kind of grace you have put upon my life if i do not have the help and the favor of men i may not go far and so i ask you favor i prayed this when it came i said thank you jesus there is no territory that closes against me no. it is true there is a grace there is a grace who is interested in you who is interested in what you carry there are people who will look at you and say sir what do you do you say i'm a businessman what do you supply he said for some i i want to introduce you to somebody we have been looking for someone like you whereas that person's cousin still does the same business and he will not introduce that person favor is powerful is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Call Ziba for me. And the Bible says they brought Ziba. And he said, is there anyone left? And Ziba said, in Lodeba, there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth. But he will not do you any good. He's a crippled man. It was not his fault. A midwife malhandled him and he became crippled. He sent for, I think that should be First Samuel, Second Samuel 9 or something like that. Yes. When you read everything, he now sent for Mephibosheth. When Mephibosheth came, he said, I am a dog. What will I do in your presence? And he said, Ziba, you are your sons. Your assignment is to farm. Farm, bring food for this man. But as for you, you will eat with me here. Go to verse 10 and see a very fearful statement in verse 10. He said, Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servant shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the first fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy son, shall eat bread all the way at my table. Read the last sentence. Dangerous statement. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants, and yet they didn't choose one of them. 15 sons. 20 servants and the king ignored them said go and get me one crippled person a man has 15 sons 20 servants you left all my sons and you sent me to Lodeba to bring a crippled man please rise up on your feet I'd like you to find a prayer partner for these two minutes if the person is not praying leave him find a serious partner that means business with destiny in one minute i'd like you to open your mouth and pray my doors must open and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. 
the keys of the kingdom shalaska barata katojiata embrekete kaparata kata shama rekete into sopra holy ghost presence and the keys of the kingdom by into no sopra kama shabra rekete mada kata parabadita re ekla na sopra to sopra to pala rebeke ekla kan shabra tondo prado rekete belekete Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare that the spirit of faith. That the spirit of faith comes upon me in this season. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of faith. This is the victory that overcomes to open every door. Faith. Rabega telekana maraba da bala kata raba papa kacho pendo prono sonda e prono sapita leja bala kato prodoto rega tebele kete bara bala kato manejando rapa ilo sonto preta manto prato rega la pato leja preta bara sabara kata papa kosia papa kato raba papa kato polo kato pendo polo kato rebeda sonto pre enkla mana tonda rapita laja bala Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I apologize. But you are going to pray. I, I, I didn't have the time to teach you in details. That one of the ways you can receive favor is by praying favor provoking prayers. You can pray your way into a realm of favor. And I want you to pray. Lord, I'm tired of this level. There has to be someone in Lagos on earth who can look upon me with favor. And I'm praying, may that grace come upon me. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire. Let your mind be Holy God's fire.